Hills was built in 1913 by my uh, arts and crafts architect grandfather, Detmar Blay. And it was a romantic rural retreat for a successful commercial city architect. So this is what we call the North Hall and is the first room that Isabella entered the first time she comes to stay here. She puts her suitcase down on the ground and behind me is a portrait of Charles I by Van Dyck. And this is quite resonant for Isabella because she shares the same birth as Charles I, 19th of November. And it's, it's significant because Charles I is our, one of our most creative kings. Huh? So although he's a disaster as a king, has the most extraordinary art collection. Izzy had a quite a macabre way of thinking what happened when she died. And she used to say well, some, several times that she might give her head to her father to ask him where, why he didn't leave her any money. To McQueen, it's like, where are my clothes? I always got Izzy's heart. Yeah, I'm, I'm taking a piece of Izzy. I love Izzy and, and we have our love together. And, and that's, um, so that no one can take from me. Izzy always said she was quite versatile. Um, and she wasn't just a one-trick pony, a fashion person. There's Izzy, the, the Chatelaine, running hills, having 80 people a year to stay, cooking, fixing the house, and also Izzy, the lady of the manor, with, with a thousand-acre estate, with 30 tenants to take care of, with sheep to look at. So there was all those elements of Izzy's character. She brought the house to life. It's not the grandest or the most famous house in England, but it became one of the most interesting houses to visit because of Izzy created this wonderful atmosphere, a salon, an intellectual salon where ideas were discussed. Isabella had her funeral in May 2007 at Cross Cathedral, where we'd been married on her birthday in 1989. Philip Tracy organized a glass hearse drawn by six black horses to which he adjusted his beautiful feathers. And Isabella's coffin, which was a light wicker coffin, was covered in white flowers all tied together. And on the top of her coffin was the ship hat, which she'd researched for Philip the V&A in the early 90s. I think it had taken Philip about 1,300 hours to make. I tried to keep the funeral as private and personal as possible. I was keen that it, it wouldn't be taken over in a, in a kind of publicity jamboree, but I still think there was about 300 people at the funeral, which was meant to be for close friends and family, and it, and it was that. It, it, Isabella would have let any, everyone come, but I wanted a quiet moment. Huh? I will love Isabella till the day I die. And that was the thing we had together. We fell in love for the first moment we knew we would, and I think we also knew we were doomed as well. But Isabella, and how I go on with my life, I go on, I honor Izzy, and, and I came, I, I suffer from depression. I know that darkness, I know you just want to die, but I feel I have to live because she, because I have to, I have to carry on the work we did together. It's not a tragic story, there's, there's tragedy, but it's a, the point about the book is to be creative, it's to inspire other people to go out, do your thing, huh? live your life to the full. So Izzy had a wonderful life, and that we will celebrate, and her legacy is extraordinary, inspiring, huh? and that I'm very proud of. Huh?